Today we're going to investigate finite state machines with and without output. This is section 13.2 uh, and 13.3 in your textbook. I like to lump these two together because there's a lot of commonalities. Um, regardless of whether we're looking at uh, section 2 or 3, uh, finite state machines, what they have in common is there is a finite set of states, hence the name. There is a designated starting state. They have an input alphabet. And there's a transition function that assigns to each state input pair the next state in the machine. So just to be clear, uh, section 13.2, which we're going to address first, are finite state machines with output, and then 13.3 are finite state machines with no output. So the official definition from the book, and I know how much you love those, a finite state machine with, no, with output, M, is designated as a sixtuple of S, which is the set of finite states, I, which is the finite input alphabet, O, which is the finite output alphabet, F, which is the transition function, which tells us how the states are related based on inputs, G, which is the output function that assigns to each state input pair a particular output, and then S0, which is our designated uh, initial state. To make sense out of this definition, let's actually work through an example, because I think that's the best way to see what's being said. So in this example, I want to do something that's a little bit simpler than the problem tackled by the textbook. I call this the simpler than the text vending example. The assumptions about our vending machine are that the machine accepts only dimes. Soda in the machine is going to cost 30 cents. Uh, there is going to be no change return button at all, and the machine only delivers Coke, Pepsi, or root beer. So to understand sort of the, the six-tuple S-I-O-F-G-S naught, let's think about how this machine works. And we all have experience using soda machines, I hope. So let's use our common knowledge to make sense out of these pieces. The states, in this case, S, uh, the set S, or the states, represent how close you are to being able to actually get your soda. And so the states here are, are noted in green, and it represents how many dimes are sitting in the machine, whether there's three, two, one, or zero dimes. I have called the states S0 for no dimes in the machine, S10 for one dime in the machine, S20 for two dimes in the machine, and S30 for three dimes in the machine. So that means our state of our set of states are those four possibilities, S0, S10, S20, and S30. With that in mind, our inputs are the actions that we undertake. And our actions can be pressing the Coke button, pressing the Pepsi button, pressing the root beer button, or inserting another dime. Uh, when you have three dimes in the machine and you press the Coke button, your output should be to receive a Coke. When you press the Pepsi button with three dimes in the machine, you receive a Pepsi. When you press the root beer button, you should receive a root beer. However, when you have three dimes in the machine and you insert another dime, you shouldn't be penalized for putting too much money in the machine. We'll assume the machine returns that dime to you directly. Now, that's when you have paid your full price. With, if in any case you have fewer than three dimes in the machine and you do anything, nothing should happen. No money is going to be returned. No soda is going to be returned. Um, 
it's just going to give you nothing at all. So our inputs, there are four inputs, adding 10 cents, pressing the Coke button, pressing the Pepsi button, pressing the root beer button, and our outputs are going to be receiving a Coke, receiving a Pepsi, receiving a root beer, returning an extra dime, or returning nothing. Let's try and understand this now in the context of what we call a state diagram. So in the state diagram, we want to show the relationships between the states, the inputs, and the outputs. To do this, the vertex of each diagram is going to be the states. So I have one for S0, S10, S20, and S30. If I can get from one state to another, I will insert a directed edge, and I will label that edge with the input and the output that correspond. So if I start at state S0, I insert a dime, so the inputs are in purple. If I insert a dime, the output should be nothing, so we're labeling it with the pair 10, nothing, but my state will change from S0 to S10. This will continue from S10 to S20, if I do add a dime, and from S20 to S30 by adding another dime. But once we get to state S30, Adding a dime does nothing but return it back to the user. So this could be sort of a little infinite loop happening here where you insert the 10 cents and it returns the dime and you return back to state 30. But, but at S30, once you hit a button, say the C button, it's going to return, it's going to give you your Coke and return you back to the zero state where you can begin again. What I'd like to do now is alter the assumptions of our vending machine and ask you to figure out how that changes the state diagram. So here are our initial assumptions. Uh, and what I'd like to do now is to allow our machine to accept nickels. How does that change our initial state diagram? I'm going to stop the recording here, give you a few minutes to think about how you would change your state diagram, and then you can start the next recording to get the answer.